So to start crocheting, you need two basic things. And as you can see here, I have some of them displayed and they can vary greatly. And the two things that you need are a crochet hook and yarn. And of course you'll need scissors and maybe some other things, but the two main components of crocheting is the crochet hook and the yarn. So let's start with the crochet hook. I have in front of me a wide variety of different styles of crochet hooks. The most basic being the plain aluminum crochet hook. This is the cheapest crochet hook you can buy. It's about two to three dollars at your local yarn store or craft store and this is a great place to start. If you find that you enjoy crocheting and it's a hobby that you will foresee yourself doing a lot, I would probably then bump up to an ergonomic crochet hook at the very least because these can be very hard on your hands if you're crocheting a lot. But this is a great starter hook. And some of the ergonomic crochet hooks look like this. The most of them look like this. This came in actually a multi-pack of different sizes of crochet hooks. I got this off of Amazon and it's a great little investment. They're usually not too much money, but this one you can see came with different sizes crochet hooks. This is a tape measure and also a crochet hook gauge. This is less important. And then this has some tapestry needles and it came with a measuring tape as well. So this might be something you might be interested in if you think you'll be an avid crocheter. And then of course, there's different types of ergonomic crochet hooks. This came as a one item from a Joann's. And then these are a bit more higher end. So this is a hook nook crochet hook. It's made of resin and or acrylic, one of the two. And it just has a more robust ergonomic shape. And then these are one of the most expensive crochet hooks you can get. This is a Furl's Odyssey crochet hook. I definitely would not recommend this for a beginner. These are almost, in my eyes, collectibles. So just from these selections, you can see that there's very different types of crochet hooks you can get, but really all you need to start is the aluminum one. Let's next talk yarn. So as you can see on the perimeters of my screen, I have some very different types of yarns. And I wanted to show the different kinds because when you walk into the craft store or a high-end yarn store, you're going to see many, many different types of yarn. And it can kind of be overwhelming because, I mean, for me, when I started, I was like, what do I get? And I actually started with Red Heart Super Saver. That's because it's what my mom had at her house and I just took it because <laughs> she wasn't using it. But this is a great yarn to start out with because it's a weight four yarn. And we'll talk more on the sizes on the label here in a second. And it's just a very easy yarn to work with. It's not the best quality yarn, it's just acrylic. There's definitely better yarns at the Joann's or Michael's or Hobby Lobby that you could start out with, but this is a great affordable yarn, especially if you're just practicing your stitches. So I highly recommend Red Heart, but then I wanted to show some other ones that were great for beginners, and maybe not so much for beginners as well, just to show how much yarn varies. So here we have Hue and Me by Lion Brand. This is another great yarn. I actually looked up Best Beginner Yarns and this was one of them. So I would recommend this as well. It's a little bit more pricey, but it feels a little bit nicer and it's a little bit more bulky than the Red Heart. So then we have my personal favorite, Wooly's Thick and Quick. This is just a more chunky yarn. I would maybe spring for something a little bit smaller as you're starting, but this is a great yarn as you make hats and scarves and some of the more beginner projects. So keep this one in mind as well. And then, just for fun, I just wanted to show you some of the crazy different yarns. So this is one, I have a ton of this, don't even ask me why, but I have a ton of this right now and it just goes to show how different yarn is in what you'll see at the craft store. So that's the lowdown, the basics on crochet hooks and yarn. So now let's get into actually reading the labels on a ball of yarn. We're going to be looking at the Hue and Me ball of yarn a little bit closer. So funny story, when I began crocheting, I thought that any project you were doing, you just needed one ball of yarn. I know that makes no logical sense. However, I thought that was the case. So that'll be my first tip. 
Whenever you're looking at patterns to try, you definitely want to look at what yarn they're recommending and how many balls of yarn you'll need for the project or your size. So just a little aside. But so on every ball of yarn, they'll have the name of it, usually the brand, and then as you flip around, you'll see some very important information on the back. So there's a couple important details on the label on each ball of yarn. First, it tells you the weight and the yardage. This varies greatly depending on the size of the yarn. Bulkier yarns, you'll get a little bit less yardage and it might be a little bit more heavy, but that's just due to the nature of it being a little bit more bulky. And then, as I mentioned, this is a bulky yarn, which that is a classification five. This number right here will tell you the weight or the size of the yarn. So that red heart ball that I recommended for beginners, that's a size four, which might be a little bit more beginner friendly. The label will also tell you which size knitting needles and which size crochet hook would be most appropriate or they would start by recommending for this ball of yarn. As a beginner, I would start with whatever they're recommending and then as you figure out if you're a tight crocheter, a loose crocheter, then you might look at this and say, okay, it's recommending 6.5, I know I crochet a little bit tighter than usual, I'm going to size up. And for me, I normally size up probably one and a half to two millimeters above what's recommended. The label also tells us the makeup or the content of the yarn. So here we have an 80% acrylic, 20% wool blend. And that's actually the same for Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick, and it's a really nice mixture in my opinion. You'll then see the care instructions. This is super, super important. I personally am a big machine washable and dry dryable girl. I tend to shy away from yarns that require hand washing. So if you find yourself in that same boat, then you'll definitely want to make sure that the yarn is machine washable and dryable. And something about that as well, you can look at these symbols too and they normally tell you the temperature. Sometimes it'll say machine wash and dry, cool or warm. I tend to do my knits or crochet pieces on machine washable hand wash setting. If that's available to you, I would tend to use that. And then of course we have the color. So the color of this yarn is artichoke and then also the dye lot. So this is interesting because the dye lot means the lot in which the yarn was dyed, as the name implies. But something that's interesting is sometimes yarn, even if they're the same color, they can vary in shade ever so slightly. And that just is due to the nature of dyeing yarn and it could be the variance just between one dye lot to another. So if you're a big stickler on keeping every shade exactly the same, you'll want to try to get as many yarn that you need from the same dye lot. So that's pretty much all of the information that the yarn label will tell you. Sometimes there will be patterns on the inside of the balls of yarn. I've never actually used one of those, but if you're a beginner, it might be nice to practice on one of those. But now that we have talked about some of the tools used, we're going to talk about how to hold our crochet hook, and then we're actually going to start crocheting. So let's talk about how we're actually going to hold the crochet hook. There's two main ways you can hold your hook. The first is a knife grip, so it's kind of like you're chopping, you're holding a knife. And then the second is the pencil grip, like you're writing with a pencil. I personally use the knife grip. This, the pencil grip, I can't even crochet with it. So whenever you start crocheting, just mess around and hold the hook however feels most comfortable to you. Of course, recommending that you start with one of these two grips and see what feels most natural to you. So after you've gotten your grip and you feel comfortable holding the hook, I'm going to grab our yarn and we're going to learn how to work a slip knot and a chain stitch. So there's two ways you can start a ball of yarn. The first is finding the middle and this one is a little bit risky, not really, I mean the stakes are very low, but it's essentially pulling the end from the middle out as opposed from starting from the outside. And the best way to do this is to find where the outside end is. So here I see the end is going into here. So I'm actually going to pull this out so it doesn't get tangled.
Okay, that was much longer than I anticipated. But you pull this out essentially so it doesn't get tangled when you try to pull the middle out. So usually not that long, but so now we pulled it from this end. So I'm gonna try to find the middle from the other end. And you just open it up a little bit and then you just go to town, I guess, trying to find it. Um, and you're probably going to pull out more than you bargained for. So, <laughs> so like this. But here I know that the end is somewhere in this. And it's a little bit messy to start, but then as you work, this goes away and then you're just working real clean from the middle. The other way to work is by simply taking the label off and just unraveling the ball from the outside. So now that I have my tail of yarn, this is called the working yarn, we're gonna create a slip knot. This is how you'll begin essentially every crochet piece by placing a slip knot on your hook. So learning this is important. There's multiple different ways to do it, but I always do it this way. So I essentially hold the tail or the end of the working yarn in my dominant hand, my right hand, and then I grab with my other hand the working end of the yarn and make a figure four. So I'll show that again. Holding the tail with my right hand, flip the yarn with my left to create a figure four. I'll then, with my three fingers through the loop, place the figure four onto the tail and just pull it through. So I'll show that to you one more time. We'll pick up our yarn, working yarn to the left, I'll place the tail in my right hand. With my left hand, I'll flip the working yarn over to create a figure four. And then with my three fingers through the figure four, grab the tail and pull it through. So now that we have a slip knot, let's place it on our hook. So with the tail to the right, I'm gonna insert my hook into the loop and then just pull both ends to tighten it onto the hook. You don't want it super, super tight, but you want it secure. It's not gonna fall off. So now we're gonna create chain stitches. There are multiple different ways to start a crochet piece, but the majority of the projects you'll run into will begin with a chain. So you're going to grab the hook with whatever hold you have found to be most comfortable. For me, again, it's the knife position. And then I'm going to grab the working yarn. So we have the tail off to the side. We're gonna grab the working yarn. And there are also multiple different ways to hold this in your left hand or your non-dominant hand. For me, I like to flip it over my ring or my pointer finger to kind of secure it and then kind of hold it down with my ring finger. So it looks a little like that. And then with my middle finger and thumb, I'm holding the working portion of the crochet piece. Some people will wrap it around a finger to help with the tension, but again, this is just something that you can play around with. So I'm holding my piece secure, and now we're going to work a chain. So to do this, holding your hook, you're gonna go under the working yarn, twist your hook 180 degrees so that it's facing down. So when we begin, it's facing up, face it down, and then pull it through the loop that was on your hook. So I'm gonna show that to you again. So now we have one chain on our hook, we're gonna do that same thing. So with your hook facing up, you're gonna go under the working yarn, Turn your hook 180 degrees so it's facing down, and then pull it through the loop on your hook. Let's do that again. Facing up, we go under the yarn, twist our hook down, and then pull it through. So now we have three chains on my hook. So what I would recommend doing is just practicing this motion, getting comfortable 
with holding your yarn, holding your hook, and working through chain stitches. Because ultimately, it's going to take a bit of practice before you actually start working other stitches or even a whole project. So what I would recommend is just getting comfortable with the hold of everything and then working until you can work, you know, at this speed. Because that's really how things progress well. So let's talk about really quickly the anatomy of each chain stitch. You can see here, it looks different depending on how you're looking at it. This is what I would consider the top where you have the two parts of the V. So the top of the chain stitch is a V and then when you flip it over you have the bump. So each crochet stitch or chain stitch is made up of three different pieces of yarn essentially. You have the two on the top which make the V and then the bump on the bottom. So I would also practice counting your chains. Um, I would recommend, you know, saying, okay, I'm going to chain 10, working 10 stitches, and then going back through and working on counting them. Because that's going to be important as well as you create projects. A pattern will say chain 10, chain 20. So you want to make sure you're able to identify each part of the chain. And then the last part of this video, I want to talk about just a few tension items with a chain stitch. As you get more into your crocheting journey, you're going to figure out whether you're a naturally tight or loose crocheter. And what I mean by that, if I'm working a chain stitch, I'm keeping my tension a little bit looser, just naturally, because this is what a normal chain will look like. And if you pull it, if you're very tense and pulling it really tight, You can see how different these chains look from these chains. And you might find it hard to work other stitches into these when you begin your first row because of how tight they are. So what I would recommend too is just messing around with how like big you can pull the top part, how tight you can make it, and then see what feels most comfortable to you. And then as you begin projects, you'll find like, okay, I'm making these way too tight. I cannot work my crochet hook back into these stitches and that's just something you'll figure out as you practice more. So that's how you create a chain stitch, the building block of any crochet piece and then in the next video we're going to learn how to work a single crochet.